Now that we're all set up between build.com and zero, as far as the sync goes, there's some more housekeeping items, some more setup that needs to be done before you're really ready to start working uh, together with build.com and zero. Uh, for one thing, you're going to need to create two bank accounts, right? So we're right here in our dashboard. Let's go to accounts. Let's go to bank accounts. And we're going to add a bank account. And one is going to be called money in clearing. And we'll save it. Oh, it wants a valid bank account number. Let's just put in one, two, three, four, five, six. Fantastic. Then we're going to create another one called Money Out Clearing. And this will be one, two, three, four, five, seven. Yeah, that's all done. If you're going to want to be able to track tracking uh, department and location uh, in build.com and zero, then you have to use the tracking codes for that. So we're going to go to settings and we'll go to general settings and we'll go to tracking. And we're going to add a tracking category and we're going to call it one department. Save. And we're going to add another tracking category and this is going to be called location and save. They have to be named exactly department and location in order for the sync to work with bill.com. Now that that's done, there, we're going to actually need to go back into one SAS. We had to get the account set up for bill.com before we could go to this part. So let's go back over into the one SAS account and on the bill.com side we're going to go to settings and there's some updates that we need to make especially now that we've got those accounts in. So notice here sales taxes we can actually check off uh, pull and push if we wanted to so I'm going to check that off because that's something that I would want to do. Um, and scrolling down we have the contacts and we have the properties. This is the stuff we went through already. We have the default uh, due date offset for invoices. Uh, most of the time, you probably just want to leave that at zero. And this is what I wanted to get you to. So the bill.com money and clearing uh, needs to sync to the account that we created called money and clearing. And notice it doesn't show up here yet because I just created it and I've yet to update this. So what we need to do is go back to the dashboard and we're going to choose synchronize on the bill.com option here. So it's currently synchronizing. Okay, then you're, you're going to want to synchronize both of these actually just to make sure that everything uh, did synchronize. Because remember, I added the accounts in zero. I want to make sure that those get synced over to bill.com and one SAS so that then I can go back into the one SAS settings and actually set up the the accounts to pull to and from the accounts that I created in zero this is critical because all your AR activity is going to come in through the money in clearing account and all your AP activity clears out through the money out clearing account and if you've never used bill.com before while we're waiting, I'll explain what that means. So if I schedule four or five bills to be paid on, on bill.com, bill.com will uh, group those as a lump sum and pull the entire amount out of my bank account. That makes reconciling a lot easier and faster because I have one transaction to reconcile rather than four or five. And it takes that money out in a lump sum and it clears it through the money out clearing. So it basically books an entry that takes it out of the bank account and goes into money out clearing. And then once it's actually paid, it, it goes out, right? Or, or, yeah, once it actually gets paid, it clears out from the money out clearing. So the, the bill payments go in through the money out clearing, and then when it actually gets paid out of the account, that comes out of the money out clearing, offsets against the bank account, and that way everything zeroes out. You'll see what I mean more clearly once you start actually using it. But rest assured, it works, and it works beautifully. 
So we've finished the uh, update. So now let's go back into our settings so that we can set up the right accounts for it to pull from and push to. Push and pull. Pull and push. And uh, I'm not going to make you go through these. Oh, look, it, it killed off my sales tax pull. So obviously that's their way of saying, nope, sorry, pal, you can't do that. Uh, so now let's go here, and there's my money in clearing. So money in goes to money in, money out goes to money out. Once you've established the money in clearing, money out clearing, uh, the rest of this is to determine if you have different bank accounts, let's say, that you use when you're making different types of payments. Like you might have one account for ACH payments, a different account for uh, a, 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 a cash invoice payment or a check and so on. So your cash might go to your petty cash account, right? So because you have a way of indicating in bill.com that something was paid for uh, by cash. So let's just say everything else is going to go through the operating account, right? So we're going to choose that. So, and, and they suggest, of course, that the best practice is to make sure that you've filled all these out. If you, for some reason you need to create the account in zero to have it show up here, just as I had to with the money in and money out clearing, then do as I've already done. In other words, you know, you can finish this and save it, go back, add what you need to in zero, perform another sync, and then you can come back here and, as you saw, your accounts will appear here. So that's going to be really important, obviously, to get this set up, to pull, you know, the pullbill.com uh, to make sure that your account mapping is done properly here. Once you've got this set up exactly the way you think you need to, scroll to the bottom and click apply. And then we're done. We should also go back and sweep through the zero settings now that we're here. And there is one thing I want to show you uh, that I want to clarify for you. Uh, you know, depending on what your preference is, I may have misguided you on one aspect of this that I realized as I was digging a little bit deeper into this. So now we're in the zero settings. Previously, we were just looking at the bill.com settings. <coughs> if you scroll down here to the uh, accounts receivable and payable settings, remember we covered this in the initial setup. And over here, I suggested a check off paid because my feeling, as I explained, was that I would want invoices, since I'm doing a new setup, I would want paid invoices if I happen to have some paid invoices to sync over. But what I found out uh, upon further research was if this is checked off, it will sync invoices from zero to bill.com, but they'll show up in bill.com as unpaid. So you don't want that checked off unless you have a reason for wanting to show them as unpaid. So that's something that uh, you're probably going to want to change. If you were following along and previously you had set this up as paid, then you're definitely going to want to come over here to the dashboard and go down to the zero settings. I'll walk you through it again. So under the zero settings, click settings. I should say under the connections, go to zero and click settings to be very specific. And down here, uncheck paid and choose apply and now we should be all set let's synchronize again just to make sure that every uh, setting change that we've made will be sort of reflected on both bill.com and zero accounts we're almost done so the last thing we need to do is uh, just finalize some of the sync preferences. So we're going to go over here into the overview. And the menus have changed a little bit. So if you're watching uh, you know, one of the videos that they have in the support center, you may not see everything laid out exactly the way it is now. Uh, we're going to go over to sync setup. Notice that preferences option is no longer there. It's here as kind of a sub menu here. And here's where you're going to want to you know, move your mouse over here, this little pencil icon appears and we're going to want to just set up. We've already got money out clearing and money in clearing uh, synced up. So over here we're just going to want to sync this with uh, uncategorized expenses or miscellaneous I think is what I had and if not I'll add a new one. Here I can start adding new accounts which is great. So let's call this uncategorized expenses. And then I need an account number here Let's try leaving it out because you have to, of course, check in zero and make sure that the account number is available. And I don't want a parent account. Let's save it. 
And so it lets me do it without the account number. My deposit to account is going to be my operating account, right? My nerd operating. And then default bank account in accounting software it should also be nerd operating. And let's save that. And now you should be all set. But what you also should do, and this is in general in terms of setting up Bill.com without you know going beyond the uh, accounting software sync specific stuff, is go to the startup checklist first of all. Uh, so this is checked off that I did the first sync. Uh, email, fax, or upload your bills. Of course, if you have anything, uh, if you're just getting started, you're going to want to do that. Um, here's what you'll need to pay bills online, the bank account you'll be using. So let's check off that. And, of course, I'm going to say, in my case, I have signing authority, and I agree to the terms of service since I've used Bill.com before. I'm already familiar with what this stuff says. And then I'm going to need to put in my routing and account number for this. So, obviously, that I'm not going to let you see. And it says they're going to – this is always a little scary that Bill.com is able to search the web just like this publicly and find out – this information about me, but you have to answer some questions to verify your identity. And they're pretty specific, like addresses you've lived at before and things of that nature. So enter your home address, not your company's. So obviously I'm not going to let you see that in the recording. And I just realized I misspelled the city, but too late. I already clicked next. Let's see what happens. So, <coughs> so now it says I, I need to verify my identity. So it wants to know which of the following addresses have I been associated with. And the funny thing is the correct answer on this, and again, I'm not going to let you see it, but uh, it's an address I, of an apartment I rented like 100 years ago. So I don't know how they dig up this information. It's uh, Like I said, it's kind of creepy. Uh, which numbers match two digits of my Social Security And age range is most closely matching. <laughs> okay, and now I have to fill out my banking information. So you go through that verification process, and if you're willing to, it asks you to enter your login information for your online banking, and this way it can instantly verify you. This is important because Bill.com needs to be 150% certain that you are, in fact, authorized to allow them to pull money out of the account. Um, you know, So they, they go to great lengths to make sure that you confirm that you really do have authorized access to the bank account. Now, this gets into an important point that I want to stress. I've mentioned it in a lot of Hangouts that we've done, and, and whenever we're asked about it in ABO, I make a point of making sure I make this clear. It's going to be tempting as a bookkeeping or accounting professional for you to have your clients uh, you know, have you authorize yourself to uh, initiate payments out of their bank account, to link their bank account up in Bill.com. And there's a number of reasons why it's really important not to do this. Number one, first and foremost, is liability. Unless they've actually made you an authorized signer on the account, which you might have noticed, I had, a, I had a check off a box confirming that I am. In this case, it was my own account, so it was, in fact, appropriate. But for you to tell Bill.com that you're an authorized signer on an account that you're really not an authorized signer on is technically fraud. You're lying to Bill.com. So that's, first and foremost, the reason why you should never do that on a client's behalf unless they have, in fact, made you a signer. But then there are reasons why you should never have your client make you a signer on their account or even act as one, such as would be the case if you lied to Bill.com and kind of pushed it through on their behalf. And that is because if you are a signer on their account or if you can be ratified as such because you told a third-party service that you were, then you become responsible for certain things like sales tax and payroll taxes so that if for some reason the client doesn't pay them, you'll be responsible. You can be held responsible for paying them instead of the client. In other words, they, they can go after you. Now, of course, a lot of people respond and say, oh, I have a great relationship with my client. And my answer to that is, yes, you do right now. Right now you do. Money's coming in. Everything's going well. No problems. But as soon as the you-know-what hits the proverbial fan and a few years down the line things go bad, let's say, and hopefully, hopefully that never happens, but if it does, and, it, and, they, and these things do happen, I can pretty much guarantee you that uh, everything's going to change at that point. That's a total game changer, and at that point, I can pretty much guarantee you that your client will have a very different point of view, and all of a sudden, they'll forget having told you it was okay to claim to be an authorized signer on their account. And so th th and that's just to give you, you know, one example. Hopefully, that drives the point home as far as... Uh, 
you know, why you should not do that. Uh, let's go back to our startup checklist. Uh, let's make sure that we, let's set up the inbox. This is fun. So you can set up a default email address, and you should, and you need to, so that this is the email address you're going to give to people so that they can send, the, the you know, whenever you get uh, emailed a, a, an invoice from a vendor, this is the email address they're now going to send it to so that it shows up right in your bill.com inbox, and then it's easy data entry from there. So you want to customize this. You have one chance at customizing this. So if I say nerd enterprises at bill.com, I think I tried that last time around and it was already taken. Let's see. Nope, it let me do it. Nerd Enterprises at bill.com. It works. So now you can send me your bills to nerd enterprises at bill.com and uh, maybe I'll pay them. I probably won't though, unless I actually do owe you the money. Uh, and actually, I can change it by contacting them. So cool, nerd enterprises at bill.com. Let's continue. So we've got that done. Um, approval, tell us if anyone other than you approves a bill before pay it. So now here's where you get to set up the workflow. And we're going to cover this in, in more detail in the last chapter. But if I have other users in my bill.com account, this is where I can say I can enter the bill, but the client, for example, needs to approve it. So we're going to show you what that looks like later on. And then next we're going to have uh, receivables, so we can upload a logo, of course, which I'll do. And then roles and permissions, again, uh, tell us who works on your bills, employees, coworkers, and accountants. So we can go into here. And it has sort of a standard workflow, so now you can start to see. And you can, of course, create your own custom workflow. So over here, if you wanted to add a user, I could add myself as a school of bookkeeping, right? Seth at school bookkeeping. So let's say that, uh, you know, a Seth at school of bookkeeping is going to be the client. Right, so the role I can choose is going to be any of these that you see, right? So account administrator approver. If you look across the top here, you can see what the differences are and what they have access, what they can do and what they can't do. So the only one who can be a payer, which is to record approved uh, payments made outside of bill.com and pay approved bills via bill.com, would be an actual payer, right? So I could make myself a payer. And if I was setting up my client, that's what I'd want to do. And I'd actually want to make myself not a payer. Okay, and then instant notification. We email immediately. Uh, we instantly email Seth David when. So remember, this is for the user that I'm setting up where I'm acting as my own client. And notice the email already came in to activate the account on the schoolofbookkeeping.com site. So email immediately when a bill is ready to be paid. So I would check that off. Some people are going to get annoyed because it's too many emails. But again, these are throwaway emails where the idea is to let them know, hey, you have a bill ready to be paid. So if I'm setting my client up, I definitely want them getting notified when I have approved a bill because that's going to be the workflow. I guess I'm sort of covering this here. So as the uh, accountant or bookkeeper who's setting this up for my client, I want the client to be notified because the client's going to be the payer, not me. And that way, I want them to be notified the minute I've approved a bill to be paid because that's my way of notifying them that it's ready for them to pay. Okay, and then we'll email that, you know, the user that we're setting up uh, a to-do list summary. You know, you can do it daily, Monday through Friday. That's what I prefer. I would not want to do it weekly because then I can forget and not pay something on time. So I, I like the daily uh, email for that reason. And then save. And that is pretty much it. The logo is straightforward. You're going to upload an image file. The approval, again, tell us if anyone other than you approves a bill before you pay it. So that's fine. I'm going to leave that blank. And that pretty much concludes the, uh, the startup setup whole bit for bill.com. So the next thing we're going to be looking at, that concludes actually the first section. And next we're going to be, now that everything's set up, we're going to start looking at how to manage accounts receivable with bill.com. And uh, stay tuned. We'll see you in the next lesson. Now that you've seen how to integrate bill.com with your accounting software, it's time to get into start actually using bill.com and we're going to first take a look at how to manage accounts receivable with bill.com and what I'm going to underscore for you throughout this lesson and the rest of the course is how bill.com provides you with a powerful cash management tool so it's not just that you're going to be able to receive payments on invoices and for that matter produce invoices right out of bill.com and have that sync seamlessly to your accounting software 
It's more that you're in the bigger picture. Now that this information is flowing through bill.com, going to be able to use that information to more easily and more powerfully manage your cash flow.